So you're an average streamer and you have a gameplay clip that you want to turn into a TikTok or YouTube short. You're in Resolve, you drag your clip to a brand new timeline, you drag on an effect, all your editing is done, and then you can wait. What just happened? I can scrub my timeline and now we have this perfectly formatted gameplay clip where just a few seconds ago it was completely untouched. Today I am giving away a new free preset for DaVinci Resolve that does exactly this. But stick around because I'm going to show you some advanced customization on this effect and how to save those customizations to save you time going forward every single time you edit a new clip for TikTok or YouTube Shorts. This is an update to a previous TikTok effect I had made, and not only are there more customization options, but importantly, this update also brings with it just a massive raw quality improvement. To achieve this, I did have to go into the project settings, but I'm gonna save you all the hassle of that, because if you follow the download link in the description, not only will you get the DRFX file to load this effect into DaVinci Resolve, you will also get this TikTok project.drp. Now this project has the appropriate settings changed. So all you have to do is double click that DRP. It will load into Resolve if it's not already open. I do have a version with this timeline I already named that. So it asked me to put in a unique name, but I click okay. And it will open that up and it will just give me a blank project with one timeline. And from here, I can start working. I'm going to drag in that same sample clip and I can drag that right to my timeline. And you will notice this timeline is 1920 by 1080, even though we are going to be delivering in 1080 by 1920. Now I'm actually going to uh, scroll down and in this area with all my other presets, we have TikTok V2. And I'm going to drag this to my clip and it will look a little different but before because this is actually the exact preset that you will get in the download. I will drag that over and instantly it will do some reformatting. And if I open my inspector, we start to see, uh, and hop over to effects as well, we start to see what we're working with. I can zoom in and you see in this layout, we have our gameplay clip up front. By the way, I did mock up this scene using stock footage. So no, this is not a real streamer, but we have our camera, our webcam. Uh, I have this extra area that I zoomed in on in the middle and then our main gameplay. But in our inspector, you see we have a few versions and these are just to start to show off some of the functionality. So I have this version one, uh, I can go to a version two, which see uh, moves that gameplay up a bit. And now we have two copies down here, which in this example, aren't pointing to anything in specific, uh, but uh, you can change these to whatever you want to be. Or three was actually the starting point for my previous custom example I made. Again, we're getting to that soon. But again, this is a really popular layout. You have the camera, you have the main gameplay, and then behind it, you have this blurry zoomed up gameplay. And then yeah, these two extra additional windows for information you can pull from anywhere on your screen. And all of these are controlled by these main checkboxes. If you don't want the background, if you don't want the gameplay, uh, or any of these three focus elements. This first one in these examples is the camera, but then we have focus two, focus three, that you can position to any area you want to highlight. And we have a bunch of custom controls for each of these settings. Like for that background, do you want to pull down the saturation? Do you want uh, no blur? Do you want some blur? And of course the size on the gameplay controls, we just have that main position and then scale depending on how much you want uh, in view at one time. And again, focus elements for all of these different ones, whether you want it square, round, how big. You have this pivot control, which you also have on either of these other focus elements. Um, if your camera is in a different part of your screen, just move this over to the other side of your screen where your camera could be. And then finally, these focus element controls, uh, you can pivot here again to any information on your screen, something like ammo or the score, or like if you have someone in a call, there is a lot of power here. But believe it or not, that is the beginning. You will notice in these versions, we only have versions in one, two, and three, but we also have four, five, and six. Here's where things get powerful. Uh, I am just gonna reset this and come over to three. So we're gonna use this as our starting point. And what I'm actually gonna do is click right over to four. Uh, nothing will change right out. There wasn't one saved. So now it is starting a version on four using these default settings. And then I'm just gonna go in. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna shift these uh, focus uh, two and three controls to about what we were at previously. I'll just shift this down. So it's like this player logo and on focus three, I will shift this all the way down. So yeah, it's just like this weapon and ammo counter. I know there's a lot more important info you could pull in, but I'm just doing these to show you. Yes, you can customize this, move this around, change the width and the scale, uh, reposition them however you want. 
but then while i could uh, go in and make these changes every time i wanted to use this effect i'm going to show you how to perfectly save this as is as a new copy of the effect so all you have to do is drag and drop it once and all your formatting will be done but to do that we're going to need to open the fusion page i know it's scary bear with me i'm going to click this button here to open uh, this instance of the effect in the fusion page i can zoom in here and you see hey TikTok v2 and if you're curious you can always open that up and see exactly how I built this effect. If you want to learn more, you can tear it down. That's very cool. But what we are going to do for now is just select those nodes, control C, copy, and then I'm going to open the effects library in the fusion page, come to templates, edit effects. And once I have that selected, I'm going to come up to these three dots here and go to show folder. And now if you've never opened this up, um, this is a folder where you can store uh, all the custom uh, presets that you make or you grab from other places. Uh, DRFX, that system uh, changes things a little bit, uh, but we are working with this one single effect. Now, if you have nothing here, that's okay. What we're going to do is right click and go to uh, new, just text document. That will make this new document.txt. We are changing that txt to dot setting. And then we are naming this whatever we want, whatever we'll recognize. I can just go like tick, talk, yay. I will click off. It'll probably give me a warning. Do you want to change? Uh, by the way, I do have this in my settings to always show this extension. You might need to uh, dive into your settings to change that or to modify this. But I'll click OK. I will change to that different logo. And then now if I open that up, it will be this blank text document. But remember, we copied that new group of nodes out of Fusion, and we can just paste that as plain text here. I will save that, close, and now if I go back to Resolve. I'm going back to my edit page. Resolve did just crash on me. If it crashes on you, it's okay. Load it back up. But hey, we are back on the edit page, and I am actually going to uh, create a new timeline to demonstrate. I'm going to uncheck Use Project Settings, come over to Format, I'll just change this to my standard uh, 1920 by 1080, click Create, and drag that fresh copy of my gameplay clip to the timeline. But now in my effects library, I can scroll down and not in the Sterling Supply Company now. I remember we dragged it into that general folder. So right under Fusion Effects, scroll down and we are looking for TikTok. Yay! Uh, you'll get a little preview if you scrub, but I'm going to drag that to my clip and boom, we have that exact formatting uh, with those extra changes that we have just made. I know it takes a little extra work, but I really think this will be worth it. For each game, you could have a uh, custom layout saved. You do have a lot of customization here, not, you know, extensive masking options and just like uh, this one camera and two extra controls, but, but, but I think that's that's quite a bit, <laughs> but we're not done there because there's some important stuff you need to know about exporting. The savvy among you will realize that yes, uh, the center area has been formatted for vertical, uh, but we're still on a horizontal timeline. We still have these big uh, black bars on the side. Won't that exist in our export? Well, if I hop over to uh, the delivery page, I'll give this a custom name, save it to a location I want. And importantly, we're coming to resolution and I'm setting that to custom. And here we are going to type in the actual resolution we want this clip to be. In this instance, 1080 by 1920, click OK. And our preview won't change for now, but we can add that to the render queue. We'll get this pop up saying, hey, do you know what you're doing? We do know what we're doing. I'll click add. And when I click render, our preview, oh no, uh, will get messed up. Ah, is this a problem? No, wait it out because uh, when this export is done, we can navigate to that location and you can see we have, hey, this TikTok yay, and you can see all oh, things are already starting to look good. And it is a little deceiving uh, pulling it up full frame, but if I shrink this window, you see, wow, that clip is perfectly formatted for social. It doesn't have those extra black bars. This is what we want. If anyone is curious, that one setting I did have to change was in project settings and on image scaling, I had to uncheck match timeline settings on output scaling and change mismatched resolution files to scale full frame with crop. But if that's confusing, don't worry about it. Just use that same DRP project to start a new file. Or once you load that into your database, just keep going back to that same project, make it your shorts or TikTok uh, ongoing project. And any new timeline you create uh, will have this enabled. So on export, just set your actual proper export resolution and it'll work. The link in the description will take you right to my site uh, where you can download this preset. And while you're there, check out all my other free presets. I also have some paid products and a membership there. Uh, I have some big plans for that. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.